All right, and welcome back to our next session of Surveyors of the Digital World, the Solid State Glacier. Uh, before we kick in, I just want to go over something real quick. I have been busy over the last while, since the last session, writing a kind of cleanup codification of the rules for us to use, which is slightly different, slight changes to make running a lot smoother for us. So besides the qualities, which I've changed as well, which I haven't had the chance to port us all over to yet, we're going to be using these rules for a bit. So if you're watching this on the YouTube, I'm going to link the new document in the comments as well. So you can look at that if you'd like to. Okay, picking up where we left off. The party has been traveling across the Solid State Glacier, presently bound for the Snowhearth Village. After staying the night in a cave, sharing it with a truly huge Digimon, which was pretty chill about things, all things considered, uh, you guys continued on your journey only to come into conflict with a pack of Digimon that were down by the water. They had some sort of motivation in going after you, but they didn't seem too talkative about explaining what it was before they went on the attack, and you guys went on the attack. During that, Inumon digivolved into Inukibamon for reasons. Inukibamon fought along with the rest of the party, but increasingly aggressively until just at the end of the last session, Zen's Digivice started beeping very loudly, very quickly, and Inumon swelled up in size once more as circuit patterns wrapped around it in kind of a big egg. So, the circuit pattern fades away, and it's not Inukibamon you see anymore. This creature is large and stone-like, scattered kind of insectoid legs scattered all around its base, and up at a pretty tall peak on its kind of statue-like form is a dog's head that's large-sized dog's head that's kind of snapping and snarling viciously. And I would just like to introduce one and all to... Oh, God. Oni Kabemon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's... That's awful. I love it. But um, oh no. Oh, it hasn't loaded in for me and that kind of makes it worse. <laughs> yeah, your internet is taking a bad test at the moment. Your voice is very, um, got the robot staggered out. So, uh, oh, no. for a quick reference, Zen, yep. this isn't what the ultimate form looks like. Where, <laughs> and you would know that. Oh, there it is. There it is. All oh, right, so... That's not a Digimon, that's a Colossus. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so this thing has appeared and just immediately given this loud barking roar, and it's not what anyone was expecting. So let's dig into this phase of what's going on. So the turn rolls around to Ice Devimon at this point. Uh, Ice Devimon's charm effect on Galgamon has broken due to Galgamon being damaged by this Mammothmon right here beforehand. So Ice Devimon's pulled back with Hyogamon, and there's a brief and furrowed discussion between them before uh, they just both hunker down on their Mammothmon. They don't seem interested in getting involved in this situation at the moment. Maybe it's the fact Hyogamon got pretty badly messed up by you guys attacking into it. Might have thrown it off a little. But uh, Ice Devimon doesn't do an action this turn. They just um, they go into a defensive stance. Stella, it is your turn. And okay. it is Spiridramon's turn. Oh, God. I don't remember the state of anything right now. Um, uh, Stella's doing fine at full health. Uh, Firijumon has taken a pretty decent beating. Firijumon is at one of 12 wound boxes. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, um, you, you might want to get out of there. Buddy. Uh, Firijumon is going to kind of like see what's going on with this giant new threatening Digimon. Um, there's like a big 
on a Well, belt. it's a digivolution of Inumon's form. And, like, do you specifically know what Inumon's form should be? Like, how clear are you oh, yeah, getting Stella the impression this, that this, by the way? Wrong? This is the worst thing she's ever seen in her life. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, she was not a big fan. I, I'm pretty sure it was established that, like, Zen hasn't been on, like, any, if many, like, missions with yeah. everyone else, so like, I don't think any of you know what Inukimon is supposed to... Well, I guess Inumon. Maybe this is like, wow, I did not expect this from Inumon. Yeah, like, maybe this is just... Now, to be fair, like Tora said, like, snarling and biting at the air, but I don't think any of you actually know what the ultimate is supposed to look like, except for Zen. Here's my question. He's... Uh, Onikibamon's kind of wrapped in that uh, digicode, right? Or uh, no, that's faded away as the digivolution completed. Okay, I'm just wondering if Fairy Dramon would have been able to recognize that, like, that's not a good thing as a Digimon. That's a interesting point. Uh, roll a quick bit check. This isn't taking an action. This is just for a general understanding for Fairy Dramon. So is that a roll? How many I have? Three plus eight. Okay. This is a skill check. So, uh, I don't think you picked too much out of the digi code, but I think the one thing that stood out was that you spotted the hazard symbol in it, which is for Digimon pretty universally. Oh, if you see this, you go the other direction. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Um. So Fieri Digimon's gonna uh grab his big frying pan and kind of like very gently tap the mammoth mon on the head uh and it's gonna lean over and like by its big old winged ear and it's like hey buddy ah uh, truce <laughs> okay uh for the sake of talking something down, I'd make that a complex skill check. So that would take both your simple actions. If you want to try and convince this Mammoth Mon just to stop doing what it's doing. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, uh, so charisma checks for Digimon is bit minus one naturally. So roll a 3d6 plus seven. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> That the sound that was the sound of me dabbing, by the way. <laughs> oh, the charisma of Fury. <laughs> He's a human charisma, like Toriko. Yeah. Hey man, this is one big mama jama. Uh, I don't feel like <laughs> messing with it and you right now. You sense complete acknowledgement from this mouth mom. Like it's this situation got a little more hectic than maybe it was prepared for. All right, Stella, you've got two simple actions. Um, yeah, um, hmm. Is there anything she can do to, like, Fiery Dramon is, like, in kind of bad shape still. Is there anything she can do to help him? Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can spend a simple action to de evolve, but there's not a lot you can do to apply health to Fairy Dramon. The best you could do would be give a direct to increase Fairy Dramon's dodge. Which you can do, like, the better version to do even more extra dodge. Yeah. That might be good. Um, dodge is not Fairy Dramon's strongest, and armor is uh, his weakest, so... Uh, your charisma is four and Fairy within seven squares of you, because I'm pretty sure direct is, yep, three plus charisma. So you could give, um, Fairy a plus four to its next dodge with a simple action, or if you bolster your direct, you can give it a plus six to its next dodge. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, she's, yeah, she, she really, like, yells out to him, be careful! Oh, still is worried. Yeah, she doesn't like this. She doesn't like all this right. at all. Alright, uh, Fury Dramon, just be aware you've got a plus six to your next dodge. Okay. Alright, Zen. Uh, immediately notable to you, you're wearing gloves. Everyone has full winter wear on. And you have noticed that 
the hand that's holding the Digivice, the circuit pattern that was running around the Digivice after Inumon Digivolved into Inukibamon, has started stretching off the Digivice itself and started shifting over the glove as well. Hmm. Uh, you gonna, what do you plan on doing this situation? Um, can Zen just transfer the Digivice to her other hand and take off the glove with her teeth? Oh, wait. Um, yeah, she doesn't want to let go of the Digivice because this is actually really fascinating. Um, I don't think she's too worried about... At the moment, she still is not worried about her own personal safety. Mm -hmm. This is just, like, fascinating. All right, so you shift the Digivice from one hand to the other and grasp tight, and you go to remove the glove with your teeth. Uh, give me a dodge skill check. So agility plus dodge. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, agility plus my dodge. That would be 13. That's eight. Right. Uh, the dodge skill. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. The, do the thing that's named the exact same as the combat okay. stat. Sorry. I kind of want to apply that 8 to your first roll, because that was the intended one. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, then that would be... Uh, <laughs> 15? I think so. No. Uh, 9 and 8. 17. Seven, 17, 19. Okay. Uh, so you pull the uh, glove off your teeth and just uh, spit it onto the ground? Yeah. How does she do that with her mask on? Very That's carefully. A point. Do you actually Very stick your glove under your mask and like do that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you drop down the glove. Your hand looks fine, but maybe it's just the cold, but you feel like pinpricks just on the surface of your skin. Hmm. All right. Onikabemon is going to use a combination of some skills. It's going to use its reach skill, which allows it to stretch out and touch. Uh, it has one rank in reach, so... Oh, it, Zen, you've still got one more simple action. Yeah, I'm thinking what she's going to do. Um... Does Onikibamon seem to be hit, like, its focus is on the Digimon? Its focus doesn't appear to be on anything in particular, to be honest. Uh, okay. Um, Zen is gonna try to approach it. Alright. Uh, using the simple action just to move closer. Zen closes in. Onikabemon uses a combination of reach, which means it can reach within melee range. Vajramon, Zen, Clive, and Galgamon. It is then going to use the data specialization WrestleMania to initiate a clash without an action. Hello? And it's going to use the boss quality multi grappler, which allows it to begin a grapple with multiple targets at once. Hello? So, Oni Kabemon is now oh clashing with Vajramon, Clive, Galgamon, and Zen. So, we're going to have to do some clash rolls for you four. Lordy, lordy. My, my, boy, my boy is too small for this. All right. Yeah, Clive's just a baby. So, let's start with Vajramon, who is the larger. Uh, the Clash is... God, Clashing is... Welcome to Hugs. <laughs> I just want to point Clashing. out that... Eleanor yep. is fucking horrified. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to say, like, Chiyoko is standing over here in the background, staring at an Akibamon. What? So, basically, Wait. like... Two stone arms reach out, and then more smaller stone arms reach out from around it as it just reaches out to grab everything around at once. So, uh, I think it's easiest if we. Holy shit, that's a big Each just do one. Flip. So, could all. Each of you just make a body skill check 3d6 plus body. Body for Digimon, body for human. Oh man. That's, so that's Zen. Not... Just gotta put your name there so I can yeah, uh, track to do it. That. So each of you do that. 
Oh, okay. Watch out for a cloud spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Galgamon. Oh, right, that's me. <laughs> Too busy memeing. Yeah. Um. So that's plus body. Yep. Alrighty. Luckily, we got that in spades. That is Whoa. a 25! Oh, damn. Galgamon is ready to rumble. But what about the Chunky Mountain? Oh no! There's a 20 for Onikabemon. Oh, now, the rules of clashing go like this. Both characters involved will make a body skill check, attempting to beat the agility stat of their opponent. I don't believe any of you have an agility of 20. Um... Nope. Nope, I, I got... Six. I got a seven. It's fine. The rules go, if neither character does this, the clash fails. If one character does so, they control the clash. If both characters do so, control is given to the character initiating the clash. So each of you is now grasped by one of Oni Kabimon's hands. It was able to perform this as a free action due to WrestleMania, so it can now perform a clash action. Uh, let's see. Uh, Galgamon is just like howling in distress because, oh god, his hands. First of Put all, as a free action, the control of the clash may move one unit closer to. So it can't really do that because Zen is. It's kind of like squeezed between you guys. So it can't get any closer to Badramon. So it's going to stand in place. But it does have a level of reach, so it doesn't really need to be. Yeah. And it is going to use. A melee attack. Let's see, what's the specification for melee attacks for clashing in the uh, existing rule set? Uh, I think it's Control may use a melee attack on the opponent. The target rolls half of their dodge pool. All other attacks still come into play. Well, the half thing isn't coming into play. It's just as a complex action, the controlled clash may use a clash tag attack. And they will use. My Kabemon will use. Where's the details? Uh, where is it? I have no idea what this one thing I wrote here is, so I guess I'm just going to ignore it for the moment. Uh, it's it's going to use Manifold Blades, which is a melee burst attack. Uh, I'm targeting four Digimon with this, so my accuracy takes a penalty of one per <laughs> target. Hey, hey, hey. Three Digimon and a human being. Okay, fair enough. Still taking that accuracy penalty, so 4d6 greater than 5. Successes. All right, uh, make some dodge rolls, folks. Okay. And that's dodge stat d6? Uh, it's dodge greater than, yeah, dodge d6 greater than five. Okay. Sorry, it's been a little while. Uh, that's fine. Oh! No, I only got two, sorry. Wait, oh. I did it wrong, but that's two successes. That's one success. That's only one uh, success. Zero successes. For oh wait, me. I can re-roll that one though, because I have uh, agility. Oh, so do I. I have agility as well. One, two, three. Okay. Nope. Okay, only one success. Okay. Let's see. Uh, accuracy. Yes. All right. So I got I got three total. Okay. So Zen got Zen rolled eight d six and got a zero. Mhm. Mm oh 
Oh, buddy. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Manifold Blades does three damage. So I got uh, two successes. So uh, did anyone dodge that completely? No one dodged that. No, didn't uh, Clive? Clive got three dodges. Yeah, I, I rerolled because of avoidance. All right, so you rerolled your three twos, and okay, so Clive doesn't get targeted. So starting with Vajramon, you got two successes. I got two successes. Oh my boy. So it's just flat three damage reduced by armor. You got an armor of seven, so you take one damage from that. Uh, Galgamon. I love having seven armor. <laughs> Galgamon. How many successes did Galgamon have? Just one? Just one. Okay, so you take one plus three damage, so four damage reduced have, by your armor. Yeah, I have four armor. So you take one wound box of damage. Excellent. Uh, Zen. You, hey. How many dodges did Zen have? Two? Zero. No. Zero. No. Okay, so five wound boxes reduced by armor. My armor is four. So you take one damage. Okay. All right. Uh, that is the end of Onikabemon's turn. Derek and Galgamon. Uh, Galgamon, because you are in a clash you are not in control of, your turn is skipped. Derek. Yeah. Oh, I hate this. This is... Like, even if that's what it was supposed to look like, I hate this. Uh... Uh... How do I help Galgamon from here? Or even from closer, honestly. I don't think there's a thing I can do. Can I digivolve while in this thing's grasp, or no? Nope. You don't even have a turn. No. <laughs> you guys need to beat it in one of the clashes. Apparently. So, uh... Boop, 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 boop. I can still see it, and I hate it. It's too tall. And yeah, I got, I got nothing. <laughs> I just want to point out, while it's like grasping all of you, smaller arms were just lashing about with these stone blades, but its head is still like pointing up at the sky and snapping in all directions, not looking at any of you. So this just is, to, you know, give flavor to what's going on. So this is completely incidental grabbing and cutting. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I mean, it successfully did grab. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna hide, honestly. Is there a hide action I can take? You can make a simple... Uh, let's see, is hiding simple or... If it is I simple, I can this. move back. Stealth is a simple action. Yep, I'm hiding. This is All shitty. Right, uh, how are you hiding from... Who are you hiding from and how? Uh, like, you need to break vision of you. I mean, we're in deep snow, right? Yep. We're going in the deep snow. We got winter All here right, for Derek a reason. Dives into the deep snow. Going, uh, going snow bunny style. Make a stealth skill check. Okay, that's stealth plus agility, right? Yep. Okay, so is that... I forget, is that 3d6 plus that, or is that... Uh, yeah, 3d6 plus that. And you are attempting to beat 9 plus your target's uh, brain stat... And I'm, so I'm attempting. I'm gonna 20. hide from Oni Kabemon because he, uh, despite all there this other go, garbage, scariest thing in the thing. Thank you. Uh, so it's three d six plus agility plus stealth. Uh, stealth. Yep. All right, you beat twenty, which was Oni Kabemon's passive. You were hidden from Oni Kabemon. <laughs> All right, you have one more simple action. Oh no, I, I, I already moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eleanor, Clive grappled in a clash, does not have an action turn this time. Oh, well, Clive stomp, not Eleanor. Oh, sorry, anyway. Vadramon, well, Vadramon grappled also. Okay. Eleanor is fucking horrified. She's distraught. Like, she, I feel like based on her ability to read vibes because that's just who she is as a person she knows something's funky here and not normal 
Mm -hmm. Um, she, her big concern is that Onikabiman's got Zen. Um, and she is not having that. Um, I don't think she knows how she, I think she's going to turn to Stella and Chiyoko and be like, we need to get Zen out of there now. We're, listen, I might be frail and Zen isn't as frail, but I don't think anyone here is built to withstand rock arms. No, you're quite right. Um, I, I, I will, oh, and she draw, uh, Chiyoko draws her sword. <laughs> I've got, got this. She's got, that, she's got that oh. fucking thing on her. Oh, good idea. Um, Eleanor, okay. I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. Eleanor's gonna um, do a really cool thing that isn't gonna end well at all. Okay. Um, she, she has like different um, attachments for the edge of her, her cane, mm-hmm. but one of the default ones is dead ass. She just like presses like the you know those little like push knobs that you like you push and then you slide something out. Yep. Yeah, she does that. She just has a big fucking knife in her cave. <laughs> <laughs> Our power is combined. <laughs> Steph was just like, what? <laughs> we have to do something to help Zen. This isn't this isn't normal. Something something's wrong, and we have to do something. Our Digimon are incapacitated, so we must come to their rescue. Can we really sword fight that thing? We'll See, have to sword fight it. All I have to do is to wedge this into the joints of the arm so they drop Zen. Okay, how could we? How do we make this, Stella? How do we make this happen? You, you're you're the buff one. Um... Throw me. <laughs> No, dear, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> she okay, so Stella yeet Pokemon before. It's like, I want that. Yeah, she's just like, you can do that with me. No. I am also small. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Um. Okay, this is not going to work at all, but I think I'm going to do it anyway, just because it's what Eleanor would do and it's what she would want. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that she's going to start making her way towards Onikabemon, which, no, you know what? We're, on the, we're up on the cliffs, right? Yeah. All right, so I think. Hold on, what's Eleanor's movement? It's probably well, it's very not that bad. High up. Like, you Four. could get down, but if you right here is like a slight jump. Okay, because Eleanor just wants to be like as close to eye level as possible with Onikabemon. I feel like it's quite big, but if she can at least get um somewhat. If you were standing honest. here, you'd probably be looking up a little at it, but not too much. All right, well, Eleanor can't make it there in one fell swoop, so. Yep. You have two simple actions of movement. Yeah, but I need to invoke an aspect. So I can't do both of those things. How low is Eleanor's movement? It's four. four. It's very bad. That scooter just isn't good for this environment. No. If only you had the cane snowboard attachment, you could make it. Fuck, that's such a good idea. Damn it, we'll know for next time. <laughs> Alright, so... Alright. Humans can go into... Can humans go into defensive stance? Yeah. I don't see right. a human can't use a stance by the, um... In the classic well, rules. By the classic rules, yeah. Okay. Is that something I can do? You can. Alright, so... Eleanor's gonna, um... I guess be on guard so like like mechanically she's in defensive stance and she's gonna start making her way over to be like eye level with Oni Kabimon. Alright. So like one, two, three, four. You right. could also be that's one Eleanor. closer if you wanted, because that's like diagonals are also just one. Yeah, but I'm gonna go like here next turn. Mm. Alright. Uh, Shoko. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. You have two simple actions. Right. Okay. So what? What is? Sorry, this is a really silly question. What's our movement again? Uh, there's a movement stat on your character. Oh yes, underneath six. The right stats. I have six boxes. Oh. Okay. Yep. Three. Hmm. Well, Chiyoko is, with sword in hand, going to run as far as she can towards Enekabimon. Oh my god. Alright. <laughs> Clive one, is two, fucking <laughs> I think I can get to, like, right here. So not quite close enough to help Zen, but almost. Yeah, this is... A, it's not, like, the steepest of cliffs, but there are gradients along here. So you're at a bit of a jump right now. But, you know, maybe having that height helps. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably out of range of Vani Kavimon for now. So that's one simple action. Oh god, what can I do here? Uh, Clive is horrified. Like, I don't even think he's able to talk. He's just watching Chiyoko run towards this horrific, dangerous thing. And he can't... He's, he's closed in there, right? He's grasped whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he is horrified, like too horrified to even speak. Um, this is like literally worst case scenario for Clive right now. Like Fiery Jermon's injured, the three of them are caught. This is like how Clive goes into panic mode. Mm -hmm. um, because he's very afraid of his friends being incapacitated. Um. Yeah, he's very not okay. Uh, Chico, um, your other not, simple action? He's not able to do anything, um, is he? Uh, Clive's turn is being taken up by being the in a clash, clash. which Clive is not in control of. Okay. okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, What else can I do? Simple actions. What else can I do? <coughs> you could shout encouragement, you could hide, you could... If you had an item, you could use it, I think, but I don't think you have I items. have a sword, but I, I'd have to throw it, I think. <laughs> that might be a bad use of the item. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Can I, um, is there any, like, rocks nearby I could temporarily hide behind until, like, go next turn? Uh... Not really with the amount of snowfall there is out here. There's not, like, a lot of exposed rock. Okay. It's just kind of snow drifts. You could probably... If you'd moved to try and move behind a snow drift and then hide behind that, you would have been good, but you moved to specifically get right up in Onikabe... Right up on Ob Onikabe Mon. Yeah, I was trying to get close enough to Zen, but I can't quite reach. Um... What are you thinking, Shoko? Um, I'm just... I don't know what I can do. I was hoping I'd get it close enough to attack, but not quite. So, um... When you started to say rocks, I legitimately thought you were going to say to throw, and I was like, wow. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
Can oh, can I make a snowball and throw? I will let you throw a snowball. Yes. Holy shit. Okay. So that would be accuracy check. An accuracy check. Okay, I got that. So that's 3d6 plus accuracy? Yep. All right. Oh, bro, sorry, that's... Um, decided on the wrong dice set. But All right, no, is... that's um, accuracy. So 7d6 greater than 5. Oh, 7d6. Sorry. It's all Combat right. Combat ones are the greater than five. Skill checks are the plus modifiers. Right, right. Okay. <clears throat> Two successes. All right. <laughs> okay, right, I gotta roll dodge now. <laughs> it's 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 by it's Maddie's it's excellent name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay, you are pin this thing in the face with the snow. Do you aim for the face? Yes. Okay, you pin this thing in the face with the snowball. Uh, it's kind of like snapping mouth chomps the snowball as you throw it at it. Snack. <laughs> Oh, track. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Kyogamon and Ice Devimon quickly encourage the Mammothmon to start carrying them away. This situation escalated in a way neither <laughs> was really interested in getting into. They're just leaving. <laughs> These guys are out. Uh, this specific Mammothmon up here, which Furijimon talked, walks off in a different direction from which they're leaving. <laughs> Bye. And they are leaving the field. All right, Stella, you are up. Uh, Tess said they were going to be away for a moment. Uh, so we'll can we show my to meme to the on the screen so that yes. people okay, watching can see? Pretty sure I can just copy image and paste it in here. Or do I have to save it and upload it? You should always want to save my memes. That's true. Okay, everyone, please enjoy this vintage meme. Oh, how the is hold half turned. That's extremely <laughs> good. Okay. Uh, while Stella isn't out here, we'll progress to Zen and Onikabemon. Since it's Onikabemon's turn, it's time for a new round of flash check. Flash check must be big. Repeat at the beginning of the first turn of the involved characters each round, with control of the flash potentially changing each round. Okay, so uh, let me see some body checks from y'all. So all you guys gotta do is out-muscle this big, big dog. Wall. Is this the... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um... Okay, I'm... Hello, I'm here. What did oh, I miss? Okay, uh, it was just your turn. So is there something you want to do? Are you Say gonna... Stella's turn right now. Oh, okay. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> um, so what, what's hap what's happened in the past, like, <coughs> two minutes? <laughs> um, why are there two when it comes up the field? Oh, I know. Um, the, all of the other guys, the guys have and Hyogamon and Mammoth, they just left. They hate it. <laughs> this got out of hand very quickly, and they knew not to get involved in whatever's going on here. Listen, we're just gonna go, you guys. <clears throat> I 
Uh, can Fieri Jermon actually try and assist the other Digimon in breaking free somehow? Uh, Fieri Jermon can do probably. Let me see how I wrote up doing help checks with skill checks because you might be able to provide assistance yeah. on breaking free. Fieri Jermon's uh, gonna flap his big wings and either <clears throat> assist or just take an attack, whatever. If if I can't um do like a formal assist move. There's a help check. I specified help check was humans only, so that um Digimon can't just help humans, but I think right. Digimon helping Digimon is probably fair. Uh I think it would be, you'd be moving in. So you'd be moving in to be adjacent to Vadramon and then performing a CPU check okay. to try and help Vadramon break free or whichever of them break free. Uh, and a CPU check is just roll 3d6 plus, C- plus your CPU. CPU is not great, but... Okay, uh, you got above the threshold for helping, so uh, Vajramon, you get a plus two to your next, to your skill check, your body check. Yeah. All right. So that's Fairy Jermon's actions. What about Stella? Stella, um, um, okay. How are you humans doing over there? <laughs> We're doing stupid, is what it is. We're 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 doing a dumb. Um, Stella's gonna hurry over there and give you, give you guys some backup if you need it. Alright, Stella has six movement, so... Yeah, she's probably just gonna, um... Over here, behind where Chiyoko is. Alright. <laughs> Requesting air support. She kind of... Mutters to Chiaka, what are you doing? I, we have to help her. Uh, if we can, if we can freeze then, maybe then something can be done about only, but, 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 this Digimon. Um, okay. Is there anything Stella can actually do to help? <laughs> You'd have to tell me what you want to do. Um. God, do I want her to punch the big nasty Digimon? You um. Go through a mm-hmm. snowball. <laughs> Just collecting memes over this side here. <laughs> Ah, oh, give me one moment. Um, hold on. How far did I move Stella just now? You were around here, I think. Ah, uh, okay. So I think I'm just sort of probably... thinking if I could have, like, changed that to be, like, sort of up close to... I think you have um, one home, or I... two. Actually, yeah, probably. Because diagonals and stuff. You would have had to jump down a cliff, though. Oh, uh, yeah. That probably wouldn't have... Well, it's like it's varying levels of, stif- of steepness. Like, I want to say, if you want to jump this down, I'd still make you do a athletics check as just part of it. But the DC wouldn't be high. Okay. Um, Hang on, your athletics, your base athletics is body plus, your base athletics is 12. You, you can just jump down. <laughs> you don't make you roll for that. So, so if you saying, want to change your angle from here, like if you want to run at a diagonal, one, two. Yeah, three, put it down like up here. Would that be? Yeah, fair enough. So... Eleanor and Shoko stay to the high end. Stella just jumps down and charges in. Yep. Um. Go, Stella, go! So what exactly does it, is it like, got like a hold on 
Zen or yeah, what's happening? It has these big stone arms that are reaching out. They're all various different sizes. So some of them are grasping Zen, Clive, and Galgamon, and a couple are just holding onto Vajramon. Okay, um... It just keeps producing more arms. Some of them have these, like, stone blades. Some of them are just grasp claws. She's sort of... She's kind of panicking a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. she's just sort of... She's gonna, like... Um... I guess, like, rush in and, like, grab onto one of these... Big stone arms. All right. And I'm gonna, gonna to I'm gonna invoke her minor aspect mm -hmm. as I'm doing this. So, what are you specifically trying to do? Um, yeah, she's literally just trying to, like, grab onto one of its arms and, like, I don't know, she's not, like, actually thinking about what she's trying to do here. That's the... Okay, you've oh, grabbed onto point. it, but you, are you going to roll anything? Are you going to try and do anything, or just, well, do you just want to hold it? Well, see how you like being um, grabbed. If, she, like, she's probably, like, trying to, like, restrain it, I guess. It's very big. Like, you are not coming up halfway this thing. Um... Okay, so... So, I'm, I'm like, half here right now. <laughs> I, like... Yeah, um... God, okay. If you want to make a feats of strength check to try and unsettle it, I'll allow that. You mentioned your minor aspect. That's basically strength actions. Do you want to do a feat of strength? Sorry, I'm like totally like blanking here. Um, we also have a hold action, so like you could say, I want to do this thing if something changes, and then wait for that. Yeah, I mean, I could, but it probably just makes more sense for her to just be like immediately like acting out. Yeah. So, like, Sorry, like, how big exactly are we saying this thing is? Mm, 15, 20 feet tall. How high up on the gross spider legs or whatever those are does Stella come up to? Uh, I'd say they come up to around, maybe around your neck. Sweep the legs, Stella. <laughs> Sweep all of them. For Cobra Kai. Could could she could she like grab onto one of the legs? You, well, grabbing onto them is fine. It's what you want to do once you grab something. Like it. It's gonna make a difference. Uh, 
Um. <sighs> yeah, I think. Yeah, she's just just um. Maddie is sure now. <laughs> Jesus <the> Christ! <laughs> 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 boop, boop, boop. Oh my God. <laughs> Another one for the collection. I want to make sure everyone sees this. It's very good. <laughs> boof, boof, boof. All right, Stella, you, ran in, you, <laughs> you grabbed on to one of the flailing, kind of thrashing legs of this thing. Uh, what do you? What is it you want to do? Uh, climb it. Oh my god. I was sort of thinking that, but I don't know if that would be like her first instinct. What was her I think her first instinct would be like grab it and like, try, I don't know, like try to like tear it off or something. <laughs> All right, give me your piece of strength. Do you use any minor aspect for that? Love. Oh god. Bridget, don't yeah. give me ideas. <laughs> Okay, so you're um, using your minor aspect for that one? Yes, so face of strength is... Okay, so that's a 7 plus 4 plus, plus 2. two. So plus 13. Uh, with a 24, like... One, as one of these legs is thrashing, you grab it and you stop it from like slamming down into the ground again. You're holding it up and you're just like kind of pushing it up and bending it. And you can feel it's not like doesn't tear right off. It's really solid, but like you're stopping it from moving and you're pulling at it. And you've got it. It's a pretty impressive display of strength. Shyoko, you've got a great look on just, well, Stella's wearing a coat, so you don't see the muscles going at it at all, but you can tell. <laughs> She'd make me just swooning to... just a little bit. <laughs> I just want to say um, her, the minor aspect in question is called um, punch first, ask questions later. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Very good. All right. It is the start of Onikabemon's turn, which means it's time for us to do our checks again for this flash. So I'm going to roll 3d6 plus body. All right, I doubt any of you have a agility that's going to beat that. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that's higher than the last one, so... Yeah. On the other hand, um, this thing's agility is only four, so I don't think it's actually possible for any of you to roll below four. And per the rules of clashing, uh, if you tie, again, two rounds in a row, control switches from the one in control, to the one they're clashing with. Which means that Onikabemon does not have its actions. Zen, Galgamon, Five, and Bajramon all have control of the clash for this turn. So you can nice. perform clash actions. I'll just quickly post those in the chat. Oh. And quickly... Yes, thank you. So check gameplay. Thank you. All right. For what it's worth, uh, force move isn't going to work because it's clashing with multiple of you at once. Right. Oh, 
Okay. Also, I think throw would also be a bad idea, because even if it worked, I think you just throw them away from you, which means if any of you do it, you're throwing them onto someone else, pretty much. Yeah. Yikes. I think. I haven't codified stuff for humans getting stuck in clashes, but uh, Zen, you cannot pin or throw. Yeah, I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so... Before we find out, that... Zen is super ripped. Christ. Um, yeah, if they had given me the gun I requested. Um, <laughs> so Zen is what, still in the- What, you all this dog? <laughs> Zen, Zen, Zen knows what's up. Um, okay. So, still in the- in, uh, still kind of grasped by these arms, Zen is going to kind of, like, squirm and try to free her arms if they're not already freed. Mm-hmm. Um... And she's still holding that digivice, right? Yep. How is that doing? Uh, you can see that the circuit pattern has spread over to the glove of your other hand. Which hand is your? Which hand were you holding it with originally? Um, the right hand. Okay, so your left hand is holding it now, and you can see that the circuit pattern has spread over to that glove as well. And it's a bit more wrapped around that glove than it was starting on the last one. Okay. Um. I'm assuming that if I'm es essentially grappled, uh, Zen probably doesn't have the ability to take out any of her hacking equipment. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to do a skill check while you're inside the clash. Okay. Um, but uh, the end of the clash thing is designated as a free action, so you could actually like worm your way out of this situation. Okay. Um, that would be what I'd want to do. Uh, Zen's okay, gonna... so Zen, as only coming on, mm. is like grappling all of you. Uh, Vatramon, Clive, and Galgamon struggle enough that only coming on, and Stella with its legs distracting it enough that uh, Zen is able to wiggle out of only coming grasp and drop free. Uh, I don't know if Zen would. This thing is big, right? Yep. And it's all kind of got this stone edifices on it. Mm hmm. I think she's going to just try and, like, cling on. Okay. You wriggle out of its grasp, but you're still, like, on. Essentially, uh, Zen's thinking it's easier to avoid an attack if she's, like, in a weird spot for okay. it to grasp than rather than being on the ground. Um, and I'm going to use my action to... S Can I even use the Digivice? Can, uh, will it scan Onikabimon? Uh, the Digivice is so wrapped in the circuit pattern, you can't actually see the screen anymore. Oh, damn. Okay. Then, um... Whew. So I used my free action. Am yes, I still, so still got two simple actions. Can I make a complex action and hack? And by hack, I mean, can I use my major aspect, hack the planet? and gain access, even if I can't um, manipulate it, can I gain access to Onikabemon's code? Hmm. The problem at the moment is your Digivice is in a state where you're not able to... It's not connecting properly to your computer, so you wouldn't be able to reach through to it. Okay. But uh, you can try and make... Uh, an appeal to Onikabemon through your computer all the same. It's just, it's not so much gaining access to it so much as trying to send it a message. Okay. Yeah, that works. Um, okay. Zen's still holding on to the device, but she's going to try and uh, send a... Yeah, like you said, send a message to Onikabemon through, through her, uh, her hacking equipment. All right. Uh, that's going to be a willpower check, but I will let you add your major aspect to that. Okay. Uh, so that's, is that willpower plus computer Four. plus? Huh? I uh, know, just a willpower. Oh. So 3d6 plus 8. The computer is just the medium. Yeah. What did I say specifically here? Uh... 
Thirdly, if the Digimon's tamer succeeds on a TN20 willpower check, and you got that exactly, yeah. uh, you reach through, which causes somewhere inside of Onikabemon it to realize things are getting out of hand, and for it to willingly end its dark Digivolution. Uh, this is the message that Zen sends. Mm hmm. <laughs> and then Oni Kabimon eats you all. The end. Amazing, Maddie. <laughs> oh, no. All right, Oni Kabimon, who's kind of half grasping you guys, being grasped by you, as Zen sends this computer message into it. Its <laughs> head finally stops thrashing around and gnashing at the air. And then it kind of, the head just kind of like falls off of the stone body. Oh, no! And sh shrinks down into a much smaller fleshy Digimon that hits the gr soft snow as the stone just kind of shudders and starts breaking apart, but also turning into Digicode at the same time. Uh, Zen drops to the ground, Clive, Galgamon, and Vajramon are released. Uh, I think Clive would want to try to dive and catch um, Inuman, if that's Inuman who's falling. All right. Uh, Clive makes a dive, and I will let you just quickly grasp this little dog face that Andy sent me to represent the entraining stage of Inuman. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> uh, Galgamon is just like... I don't know what this thing's name is. Snarling. I don't either. <laughs> it's a dog head. Fair enough. Pupmon. It's probably something like that. Knowing Digimon. All right. Zen successfully met the target number to stop a dark Digivolution. Well done. Good job. Okay. Oh, man. Congrats. Uh, Clive is going to fly... Um, is going to fly dog head mon um, down to Zen and just sort of offer offer him to Zen. Oh yeah, Zen. How how big is this um, in training compared to Zen? I think she just takes like him a and, basketball. Yeah, like huddles him against her chest and kind of like puts her chin on the top of its uh, round body. Oh. Oh. Uh, Clive is gonna fly over to Chioko and, like, kind of tug at, like, I just want to point out that normally Chioko, like, holds Clive. Clive is now, like, a little bit taller than her. Oh, That's horrible. Um, he's gonna, with one, with, with both of his paws, he's gonna, he's gonna grab, um, Chioko's hands and go, you almost did something Really, really dangerous. I know. Please don't. I know. I'm so sorry, but I, ha I had to. You guys. Um, and she's just I, gonna like tuck her sword away and like pull Clive into a hug. Clive's hands are shaking, and it's his so his little his little ear wings like droop a whole bunch. And she's just gonna hold him and apologize. They're both, like, kind of a mess right now, I think. Yeah. It was okay. very emotional. Derek's gonna look up yeah. from his fucking little snow hiding spot. Mm-hmm. See that everything's fine. And then, I think now it's time for a torment check. Because everything's yeah, fine now. Yeah, now it's time to just feel slightly bad about diving out and leaving everyone to this. Yeah. It probably doesn't help that when, like, he pokes his head out. Like, what are you doing back there? <laughs> All right. Uh, Torment is 3d6 plus willpower plus unmark. Uh, you've got... Oh, this is a major Torment, buddy. Yeah, it is. You've got five unmarked, So, uh, and your willpower is three. 3d6 minus two. Also, I just want to point out, I don't know if you want to run it this way, but that major aspect could be used as a downside right now. Sure could. <laughs> Should I do that? Yeah. So what is that? 3d6 <laughs> minus 6? 3d6 what? minus 6. Oh. 
<laughs> and what's the, yelling at him now. And what's the challenge rating on this? Twelve. <laughs> so if you roll a triple six, you'll be fine. Shasha. <laughs> nope. Mm. Close, but no dice. Uh, Derek just kind of. Nope. Back in the feels very bad. Back Stays in the, in the ice hole. All right. Kekum's like, hello? Did, I, I thought I saw somebody there. Has anybody seen Derek? <laughs> Aww. Stella's just kind of like silent. Bug? Stella's just like silent screaming like, ah. <laughs> Hey, Taurus. Mm -hmm. How much of all that just happened does Doghead remember? I have no idea how uh. Dark Page Evolving works. I think Doghead's taking a nap right now. <laughs> Eleanor's gonna slowly come down the cliffside and kind of waddle over to Vajraman and look all the way up at him and and see that he's okay and be like. Well, handsome, you certainly handled yourself well. How are you doing? Um, he's a little shaken, to be honest. That was a lot. But he's gonna play it off cool, obviously. Like, oh, oh, yeah, of course I'm fine. Yes, Why dear, that is what I... Yes, dear, that is what I just said. All right, now. Are you gonna give me a lift or not? Uh, yeah, he picks her up and lifts her onto his back. Uh, she sort of leans forward and just, you know how when you, like, ride on a horse, um, uh, you know when you ride on a horse and you just sort of lean forward and, like, hug horse? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what Eleanor is doing. Pick up. While this is happening, Fairgermon comes over to Stella and like puts a big scaly hand on her shoulders. That was so cool. She's still like screaming. <laughs> the duality of Digimon. That was very dangerous. That was very cool. Yeah. You didn't even that that Digimon was huge and you didn't even like I wasn't even hesitate. I wasn't thinking. I know it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Kagamon's just pacing around like did, did, did one of the mammoth mon take him? What happened? Has anybody seen him? Derek's still in a hole, freaking out. <laughs> Beating himself That's up. A good point. Maybe Kagamon, we should look for <laughs> Maybe yeah. we should look for Derek. Hello! Uh, I think one of the mammoth men must have taken it. The... Whatever the hell that was. <laughs> Do we know where Derek is, even? Probably not, because he walked over. Uh, I think he was behind you when he did his hides, so... Yeah. We were all kind of, like, ready to sacrifice ourselves for Zen. What was your so... stealth roll, Andy? Uh, I think it was 22. 22. Can I uh, try and yeah. sniff him out? I'm a dog. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's just a perception check. So yes, it was 22. Plus bit. 3d6 plus bit. Okay. My bit is 2. Oh, it's still set to that. Sorry. Well, so that okay. would still be... Derek's very Eleven. buried on the snow right now. Derek maybe retreated more than he was before, just because he feels bad. Derek, it's quite cold down there, even with your cold weather clothing on. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Zen, how are you doing down there? Um, Zen is, pro is running diagnostics on... On Lilinilmon. All right. Uh, the first thing you notice is that this little 
dog haired Digimon has a circuit pattern over its skin. And also that the glove that you were holding the Digivice with on your left hand is basically kind of started sagging like it's melting. It doesn't, it's not burning or anything, but it's kind of like falling apart. And your other hand has a very faint circuit pattern just on the back of it. Just a, like a little ring and some line. But it's mm. not spreading. It's just there. Okay, well first uh, take that glove off probably at this point. Okay. So you're going to pull the glove off. You can see that you've got similar patterning on your left hand as well. But it's uh, a little more spread out. Like It's like those circuit patterns which are the lines that end in circles and they reach down to your fingertips with little circuit circles at the end of your fingertips. Okay. Uh, I wiggle my fingers. Aesthetically, it's dope as shit. <laughs> I wiggle, uh, Zen wiggles her fingers at her in training partner. It's like, hey, we match. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see what. Uh, Chibinu Mon, thank you, Maddie. That is fantastic. Oh, that's really good. Is taking a nap at the moment. Oh, so tiny. Just a little baby. Just a little thing. But yeah, she uh, Zen's just going to be running some diagnostics to see if uh, she can like figure out. Uh, is her digivice back to normal? Actually, uh, it is still wrapped in these like it's like physical ridges of this kind of yellow material that are it's wrapped around it in strange co code patterns of. Um, circuit patterns of darker and brighter yellow gold. And it's completely wrapped around this. Like, you can't see the screen on anymore. It's like there's a shell around it. Huh. Okay. It's gilded. She, she's thinking on it. She's thinking on it. What are you doing with the Digivice? Oh, um, the shell, is it, like, manifested in any sort of physical way, or is that just, like, more of a metaphor? It's physical. <laughs> like, can if I... you hold it, you can feel the ridges around the Digivice now. Can I attempt to, like, peel it off almost by putting my, you know, like, peeling from the ridges? It's not, it's very solid. It's not shifting. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think Zen kind of, like, waves it around a little bit and then, um, like, taps it on the ground. Uh, but when, no if no when nothing happens... Just like, uh, oh boy. Now Zen's in trouble for breaking government property? I don't remember how exactly who employs us. And that's how they like it. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Uh, I think Eleanor is going to be really annoying and slide off of Vajrama and then sort of hobble over to Zen and ask if she's hurt at all. Oh no, no, I'm 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 doing okay. Does Eleanor see your hand? Is Zen trying to hide? No, Zen hands? Zen would not be trying to hide. Also, there's no like wind blowing or anything, but it's still just passively really cold here. Your hands are cold. Oh my goodness. Zen, dear, you really need to be wearing gl and then she sees the things on your hand. She goes, What what is this? Art, does this hurt? What is this? It doesn't hurt. That's well, only 50% of my questions answered. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think Zen is particular, is not concerned about like her welfare with this. It's just like, hmm. She's like, yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Um, I haven't seen anything like that before. Visually, sure. Not sure what this means for you. I won't even pretend I understand. Eleanor, like, pats her hand and, like, digs, like, all those little, like, hand warmer packets that you, like, rip open and it's warm out of her bag and just hands it to Zen. Oh, thank you. Goes, You're so welcome. And then she hobbles away and hassles Vajramon to let her back onto his back. <laughs> hey, Derek, buddy, you're getting pretty cold. 
Yeah, I think I think he's freaked out for a li- for pretty much long enough. So he's just gonna like hop up and act like nothing happened, but you know, be pretty caked in snow because <laughs> it's not like this was you know a dugout, you know, well packed yep. like for the night kind of thing. It was literally just a hole to hide in in the ground. Yeah, you pretty much buried yourself under some snow and slush. Uh, the outer layer of your clothing is a little bit wet now. Also, his hair is probably pure white because it's just a bunch of snow in there, and until it melts, that's what happens. Yeah, you don't feel good, physically yeah. or emotionally. Yeah. He's going to start making his way back towards the group. Do, 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 do. That was me, not Derek. Derek's not chill enough to be doing to be do do doing right now. <laughs> Alright, uh, Galgamon. Derek is here! Anna, you're muted. <laughs> you're still muted, buddy. Sorry! Um, they're gonna... He's gonna run over and, like... You know how a big dog kind of, like, can bowl you over when it's not trying to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so he's just so glad to see you again. Back the mammoth the didn't, didn't take you. Why would it have taken me? I don't know. I couldn't find you anywhere. I thought maybe one of them had stolen you away. I was here. I'm Derek, glad. Derek glad just, you're okay. <laughs> Derek is just gonna pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> That's how mm, Galgamon's gonna like is. hop back and then scoop Derek up in the scarf hands. You're <laughs> safe <is> now. Old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Clive's gonna look around at the group and and say, um, "We should uh, we should go before those mammoth mon come back." I I know that that Inumon scared them off, but they they could be back. We should start heading back towards our destination. Oh, yes, the, the, the town. We should... Oh, goodness, I almost completely forgot about that. Yeah, yes, it right kind of feels like it was weeks ago that we were trying to get there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> but yes, all right. Um, once everyone's feeling well enough to continue, we should continue on our way towards the town. Chioka raises her voice to, like, address everybody with that last bit. Oh yeah, who's still? Is there? Are there any humans that are injured? Uh, I've got some wound boxes, but just one. Um, how? What? Taurus, what is the sort of? Is there like any kind of rules for using uh healing stuff outside of battle? Because uh, Clive as Nyanjimon does have like regenerate on one of his moves. If that is helpful at all to anybody. Yeah, I'd say considering you're not in combat, like. Clive can just take the time to apply regenerate. Yeah. So I think uh, Clive's going to sort of look over the group and check out who's hurt. Um, Fieri, Jermon, are you planning on de-digivolving or just chilling? Yeah. Fieri, Jermon, de-digivolves back down to Bergamon, I think. All the way back down to the Berg. Yeah. Took a lot of uh, hits. Very cool. Is Vajramon remaining? Um, I think he will for the time being. He's got Eleanor on his back. Yep. What about yeah, Galgamon? Uh, Galgamon's gonna stay Galgamon because of the scarf hand. You can hold Derek. The true order of hold has been reasserted. <laughs> yeah. Turntables. This, this way he can keep a better eye on it in case any more mammoth mung come along and try and kidnap him again. <laughs> Because that's what happens now. Yeah. This is what Galgamon believes. This is what think, Galgamon uh, actually believes. Yeah. I think, what do you guys uh, want to do? Uh, first, Nyanjimon's going to heal up Zen just to make sure she's yep. she's okay. Do I have to roll anything or is it just like... No, no, you've you go. got enough time now. You can apply that. I do All love right. the idea of just like Zen repeatedly dodging it outside of combat. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to read the uh, the uh, 
description for um, Clive's healing move, which is perfect blessing. <gasps> um, uh, Clive wraps an ally in soft, feathery, fluffy embrace with his soft wings and tail. Oh my god. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fluffy Zen gets hug. a big fluffy hug. Aww. Joker's just like, aww, in the background. And then uh, Clive, Clive is like, you know when something really dangerous happens and then you have the adrenaline rush after? Yep. Yeah, Clive's gonna like swoop up and just pick Chiyoko up and just carry her down. Oh! Uh, one thing, note Clive, uh, especially it's really comparable because you just um, wrapped around Zen and then you went and grabbed Chiyoko. When you wrapped around Zen, it felt like kind of prickly. Just like there was needles on your skin. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, mm. I think Not Clive's... like painful or anything, it's just slightly uncomfortable. That seems think... fine. <laughs> That's fine. I think Clive is gonna notice that, but be too preoccupied with getting the group moving to really mm -hmm. think about it. Okay. Um, and yeah, scoops up Chioko so Chioko can be his hold for a change. Yeah. She's fine. She she she's she's delighted. Honestly, this is this is great. Yeah, Clive Clive's grinning, and is just swooping down. I don't, actually don't know which way we're going. Which way are we going? Well, Derek uh -huh. west. <laughs> yes. so Derek from his very dignified position of being held by a scarf. Uh, so which way did those things go? Um, the mammoth mon headed west. The rest of them headed south, and it's not been so long that you can't see in the distance. They're just kind of moving in a north direction along the coast. Okay. And west is the way we know the town was, right? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure they were not heading, and we weren't going to be running right back into them. Let's jump back over to the overworld map now that we're done with combat. Yay. All right, folks, how are we doing this? Talk me through how you're moving. Well, Galgamon, right. how, are, how are we moving? <laughs> Galgamon is um, going to head to the front of the pack with Derek still being held in the soft, woolly embrace of a scarf. <laughs> yeah, Clive is just kind of flying. I think... At this point, he's probably getting a little tired, so he's walking again. Yeah, Chioka is gonna hold one of his little paws in her hand. Yeah, they're just gonna sw swing some paws, swing hand swinging as they yeah. walk through. And I, I yeah. guess the narrative tie between my two different characters now. Hey Zen, how are we moving? <laughs> uh, Zen is not letting go of Chibi <laughs> Inulan. Well, I think I'm... Zen's just walking? Yeah, just I think, walking. I think I'm full anime snot bubbling right now. Aww. So, Aww I think that's baby. basically what Taurus said. Just I mean, anime. you're being lifted up and kind of swung around while your hair, the snow is melted enough that your head is wet. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about... Uh, I'm oh, talking yeah, about... She, she yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing's napping. <laughs> but, uh, Derek, like... Maybe just grab the scarf and try and dry yourself off a little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ask Algamon for a pat down. Yeah, the other scarf hand is just, just like. That's just like me swing, that, swinging that, my little hoodie sleeves to simulate the sound effect. That way that like parents do that like pat down snow that's always too hard, but they're just like smacking off your snow suit and stuff. Just. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So is this like the general order you guys are moving in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys continue heading around the coast. It's quieter now than that flash before, but it's still like notable enough that in the distance, every now and again, there's another far across the sea of stillness. There's one of those huge plumes of snow that rise up into the air. And at times the a solid ice in the sea cracks and ships, and 
if you're looking out, you swear sometimes you can see shadows beneath the ice and water, but nothing surfaces that comes out to pay attention to you in any way. But there's a general feel that as much as things are quiet now, it's not for a lack of liveliness around you. You guys are just avoiding it for the most part. That's good. I feel like we've had quite enough liveliness for one instance. It's after a bit more travel, heading around the coast is pretty easy along the um, beach where the ice meets uh, the snow. I guess that counts as a beach for this. Where it changes from snow to ice over water. It's fairly stable and easy to head around there. Uh, Vatramon has to stay further over the snow than the ice because you don't want to break through that. Mm, he's a big boy. Especially not when an old lady's on your back. That seems like... Yeah. <laughs> he's a big boy, and he's also kind of, like, low-key scared that he's going to slip on the ice. But, you know, it's, it's fine. No one has to know that. Eleanor can tell, but she doesn't say anything. And her thoughts. Do you know how hard it is to walk on ice with hooves? <laughs> oh. All right, you guys continue traveling around, and it's after maybe about half an hour of walking more that you do spot uh, another Digimon in the distance. You've made it around to the next stage of this map, and you see two Digimon. You see, first are. and foremost, one is a large Mammothmon still. So, like, in the distance a little way, there's a Mammothmon, but it's not actively doing much. It's shoveling through some snow. Uh, do you guys? How do you guys deal with the fact it's not so close to you, but it's like it's in the? You'll get closer to it if you keep heading around this way. Hmm. Well, Clive's in his ultimate form, so he's not too worried, but his grip on Chioko noticeably is tighter. <laughs> I think I think they would want to just keep going. At did, this we, point. did you say we saw two things or just one? I you yeah, where's the other one? Well, for, to start with, you just see the one big one. Okay, it stands out to you. So you just like keep on following around the coast. Yeah, yep. I I think so. Yeah. All right. Uh, if anyone's like taking a close look to see anything about this, go ahead and just roll a perception for me. Yeah, Derek might as well since he's not using his feet. Might as well use right. his eyes. What did you yeah, say? Perception? Cool. Perception. Yep. Oh, that's not super great, but it's not terrible. Well, uh, Derek, since you failed a torment check before, you take a penalty to your next skill check of the amount you failed by, so you take a minus three to this check. Okay, so that would be perception, willpower. Okay. I mean, it's still positive. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll try as well. Let me see. Perception. Power. Perception is willpower plus, right? Yeah. Okay, then yeah. The amount I failed by just negated the willpower part of it. Because I have no willpower. Because of fear. Alright. Uh, Shoko, it's specifically you who notices that you're just keeping an eye on this Digimon as you're walking by, and you actually spot another Digimon just hanging around it and keeping an eye out. Ooh. And as soon as you spot this Digimon, you notice that it spotted you at the same time. And it quickly uh, sh shifts, uh, shifts forward through the snow to approach you guys, but it's not like moving aggressively, it's just walking over the snow, very easily over the snow, like it's just not sinking at all. The Mammothmon remains behind, and this little kind of white teddy bear snow Digimon shows up, but it's wearing an amount of armor as well, and it's got this weapon strapped over its back. Oh, oh it's so cute! Oh, Oh my gosh, Chick is gonna like perk up and like wave since it's coming towards him anyway. Like, uh, hello! Alright, this little one sees you wave. It's like, hey! 
this one was telling me there was a big fight back there. Was that you guys? Oh, yes. Uh, that was us and I. two other Digimon that we kind of ran into by accident. Um, so this is this is the mammoth mon from that from that fight. Uh, yeah, saying that well things got really weird basically. Um, yes, that's definitely one way to put it. But I believe we have it under control now. Gonna this little Digimon's like it. kind of walking around you guys, what, looking over you. You can tell very much that it's giving you each an appraisal. It's talking friendly, but it's also very much watching out. Yeah, like, so, what are you all up to? Oh, we're heading um, for the town, actually. We got a little waylaid. Any reason to be the, heading out to the town? Oh, we're making a map of the area. And we'd like to get all the major landmarks, like towns, other places that Digimon tend to live. So you just start exploring? Yep. It's a dangerous place to go exploring. <laughs> Oh yes, we've we've noticed that on the way down here, we uh, we we started um, up quite a ways, and we passed the sanctuary, and then we've been going down through this. One. So you were by the sanctuary? Yes. That's how we got. There. Actually, they gave us directions down this. Uh, Shoko, just make a persuade check for me. All right. Um, can I activate my major aspect here? Sure. All right, cool. That is a additional four to persuade. So that's charisma, persuade, and then four. So that's six, three, and The 19. Also, her major aspect is called Caged Bird, by the way. Ooh. That major aspect helped. That was not a good roll. Two yeah. or three and a one? Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> All right. So John looks you over and it's like, okay, well, sounds like you're not specifically out to cause trouble, but I'm still going to take you there myself. And it looks up at Vajramon. You're with a human, right? You guys can Hello. change form? Hello. <laughs> this little one's just looking up at Vajra. I was like, I'd well, prefer to you reduce Vajra your size a little, please. Uh, but... <laughs> Come on, dear. Be polite. Uh, you... Can you walk? You okay yes, to... yes, yes. <sighs> All right. Such a gentleman. And she gives him a pat and then slides down. All right. And then he shrinks back down to Bakuman's eyes. All the way back down to Bakuman. All right. And Eleanor jams the ear cozies on his head. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Stealth kill. All right. Finish. Shijimon is still walking around, just checking you all out. Stops before five, so it's like, you can do the same thing, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Is, okay. Um, Clive is kind of eyeing this Digimon suspiciously. Um, can he, can Clive just go down to, uh, down to Gatomon and not all the way to Salomon? Sure. Okay. All right. Five steps down to Gatomon. Right. That's right. my boy. Well, I was reduced Jericho's down. gonna scoop him back up. All right. Yeah. The Digimon looks a bit over to where Galgmon is holding Derek, but doesn't seem to make noise about you guys being at the champions. It's like, okay, uh, I'll escort you to the village if you just follow behind me. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Clive is still eyeing him suspiciously, but is not protesting. It it's not a huge Digimon. Like it's taller than Clive, but shorter than any of the human. Uh, it's not the. It's not like the size or anything uh, that's bothering Clive. It's the size, so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. As it starts to lead it, it uh, gives a little whistle and the mammoth mon shifts and starts walking alongside the little guy. All right. Uh, organize you guys as you are following behind this Digimon that's leading you forward. Where All are right. you going, my carriers? <laughs> Yagamon's going to try and keep up as best as he can. Still holding Derek because he wasn't asked to size down. So. All right. Is, Is literally that... everyone except for Eleanor and Bakumon a pair of someone holding someone else? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Bakumon wants to be held, but will never admit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bridget? Yeah. How's Zen doing here? Um, I think Zen's just being, you know, quiet. All right. Um, Falling behind. Yeah. I can't move Carrying dog head. I don't know who's in charge of that one. <laughs> Uh, do you have access? Oh, I don't think you patrol, did I? Trolled by. There you go. Hey, I can move now. Whoops. All right. So this Digimon, who's keeping an eye on you guys, uh, it's as much as Clive, for example, is being suspicious of this thing. Clive, you can also immediately tell this Digimon is also being equally suspicious or questioning of you guys. But, Suspicion squad. Yeah. But they are still leading you onwards. Uh, the Mammoth Mon is much larger than all of you, and it is just walking alongside, and each step it takes, it shifts into the snow. You guys, just you're aware of this much larger Digimon that's walking beside you. Uh, is there anything you want to do or talk about, or you're just following this thing in silence? I think Eleanor is like taking random pictures of the group as they're traveling. Uh, one especially impressive, like snot bubble from Chibinumon. <laughs> A lot of pictures of Bakumon with the ear cozies, <laughs> and also like the other two Digimon. That well, Mammothmon, yeah. The other one, no, because Eleanor doesn't want to be rude like one is an elephant and one looks like a small child <laughs> that's fair alright uh, anyone else want to do anything before we move forward uh, Zen can't do her standard scanning so oh, I'm at a loss I'm just picturing okay, Zen reaching you. for the scanner for once I'm looking at me. oh yeah <laughs> just shit alright uh, this small white Digimon guides you guys over the snow hills and around the beach. Uh, once you cross over a largish hill, which is about here, you can see a path that runs down to the water. And down by the water, there is a number of wooden houses. Some wooden houses and some igloos, which have all just been arranged along the coast. Uh, Clive forgets his suspicion for a second, and he's just so happy to see the village. His ears perk up, and... He's like, Chioko, look, there it is. <gasps> oh, we finally made it. And you guys are being led down to the Snow Hearth Village. Uh, this is, it is much, it has more than this going on. I just don't have a better map to use for this. Uh, Digimon's just like, uh, wait here for a bit and I'll go forward. Just oh, dashes yeah, off into the village. Eleanor is taking so many pictures of the village. She's so enchanted by it. She's like, oh, isn't it beautiful? Bakuman, come look at this. Oh, coming. Jake is going to grab her little old camera and be like, hey, hey, Clive, do you want to try? Yeah, do I? He gives him, like, he does little grabby hands with his paws. <laughs> She'll hand the camera over to him so he can try taking pictures. He looks at Chiyoko and he's like, let's take a, uh, uh, Ussie? Yes! <laughs> Love it. Um, so he clumsily takes a selfie with the two of them that he does not give the correct name. 
to. And it's probably like super zoomed in, so it only has like <laughs> half of their faces each. It's like really blurry. Very yeah. zoomed in. It's fine. There's... She's going to treasure it. What, we can what... see we can see Derek kind of being uh Derek kind of hanging out in the background. <laughs> so is it just one of you or both of you whose eyes are closed in the picture? <laughs> I think I think Clive I don't know. I think it's it's just Derek in the background. It's <laughs> Derek's eyes who are closed and like he's like motion blurred in the background. <laughs> Cryptid. Cryptid spotted. <laughs> Love that. Uh, since Eleanor is taking pictures of the village, I think I'm going to have her uh, do another perception, maybe? All right, just to, like, survey the environment? Yep. All right, go ahead and give me a perception roll. Well, it's fine, I guess. All right, taking over, the village is a pretty equal mixture of snow-based dwellings and actual wooden houses. There's a little dock that leads off into the water, but because the water's frozen over, there's like a layer of ice over the dock itself. Mm -hmm. uh, no boats or anything, but you do see that there's some um, stone circles with snow cleared in the middle of them and some wooden ashes of where a fire might have been. Uh, as you look out, from the corner of your eye, you keep thinking you might be seeing Digimon that are running about or just like watching you guys from out of sight, but you can't get a good beat on any of them. Okay. It's about this time that the uh, white furred teddy bear Digimon returns with a another Digimon walking behind it. This Digimon's about the same height as it, but it's walking a bit slower and using a large staff just to put it in the ground and then take some steps forward and then follow after. Hey, Digimon! Here's this Digimon. Oh. oh! Eleanor goes, aren't your feet cold? Goodness gracious! And just walks forward. It's like, ah, see, Chakmon told us we were expecting human visitors. Welcome. Oh, so Welcome. nice to meet you. Hello. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Oh, well, it's rare to get travelers here. My name is Gigimon. I am the caretaker of this village. Oh, oh it's a pleasure to meet you. Wonderful. And you said your friend's name was Chakmon. Chakmon, and Chakmon's just kind of like wondering why. He is a caretaker of the wilderness around here who looks after travelers and such. Oh, uh -huh. how kind. <laughs> Chakmon's kind of... Maybe not meeting your eyes after being introduced that way and is moving over to the Mammoth Mon and oh, talking to him he's... about getting on a move. Kind of bashful, isn't he? Eleanor leans over to Bakuman like someone I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Uh, she ruffles your ears affectionately and then looks back to Gigi Mon. It was like, well... Let's not remain out in the cold. We Inside of the houses here, we have warmth, and it's good to sit down and rest. You must have been traveling for some time. Oh, yes. My my bones are cracking. I know yes. the feeling. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Uh, Gigi Wan heads back to probably the largest house there, which has this um, wooden carved, like a... Um, Viking ship, ship dragon head extending out from the main cross of it. And he just walks inside there and invites you all in. And inside, like, the walls have been straw packed. So it's, it's warm in there. And there's a small fire pit inside there, too. It's the warmest you have been since coming here, even more so than what the frost. One person has been warmer than this. And Zen, that was when you were beneath the frost. Wind Sanctuary with all the Doramon and the much larger Digimon. Yes, Their body yes, the kept it much warmer there. But the it's trauma, a yes. drier, nicer warm there. Hmm. So Digimon walks in here and takes a seat and invites you all to sit down and take a load off and tell them about what you guys have been up to. So we're all just kind of like you know, sitting 
like sitting around in this nice little this cozy little yep little house. Nice. As um, you do, this um, other small fur Digimon comes around with this <gasps> basket that's got uh, little flakes that are kind of shaped like fish. They're not well shaped like fish, but they're shaped a little bit like fish. And they're just Clive offering, absolutely just put the basket down for you guys to have some. Oh, thank you so much. Clive takes the biggest handful. Yeah, um, I almost want to say he takes one of his gloves off and just fills it with them, but he's got he's classier than that, so he's just gonna take a big old handful. Yeah, it's um slightly salt chip flavored. There's maybe the faintest hint of a fish flavoring to it, but it's mostly just um salt and crunch. Oh, Clive is absolutely loving it. <laughs> Choke is gonna occasionally like take some from his big pawful. He's you uh, can he's kind of purring. Jijumon <laughs> has invited you guys to tell them about what you've been up to and what's brought you here, and just to recount whatever you'd like to talk about. Oh yeah, uh, Chico will explain. Mostly that not they to are. Oh <laughs> well, yes, there is that, but she will most she will explain that um, that we're here with the surveyor's corpse, and we're just making a map of the area, and we come down from the sanctuary in order to map out like the sanctuary is one place that they hit on this trip in order to map out locations where Digimon live. And this town is their next stop. Digimon thinks for like, oh, it's a rough time to have done this. The map won't last long, I'll tell you that. Oh dear, why is that? Well have you been feeling the shaking and the plumes of snow? Yeah. Oh Oh, is that, that, that freeze, right? The, no, no, um, the deep frost, the next deep frost is a little while away. Long enough that we're not worrying about it yet. Oh, that's, but, that's good at least. No, no, uh, what you're seeing in the distance is, well, it's a legend of this area of the digital world that in every so very long an ancient digimon wakes up from beneath the ice and sets to reshape the glacier to a form only it seems to know about but it's woken up and it is reshaping and you've probably seen the mountains already starting to fall as it lowers some and raises others oh could it have been that big fluffy tiger we were in the cave with oh you met the Lord of the Glacier. Oh, oh I didn't know you had been in the presence of royalty. Oh, goodness, yes. We stopped in a cave on the way down here when it was getting to continue. And he allowed us to stay the night. Most, they were roomies. Most Digimon, <laughs> won't go, most Digimon won't go near the Lord simply because, well, it's very large and very strong and that's a little unnerving. Um, did you manage to speak with it much? Um. A, a little bit. Not not too, too much. much conversation. We did talk a little bit. Hmm. I haven't spoken to the Lord in the longest time either. It doesn't really come around the Snow Hearth Village, so I don't know what it's thinking about with the ancient at work. Hmm. <sighs> well, uh, yes, it's, I mean... Once it crosses the Sea of Stillness, it's going to be this side of the glacier next that gets reshaped. And I don't know how much your map is going to last after that. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, you know what they say. It's not about... It's the journey, not the destination? Yes, and the friends we made along the way. You were being explicitly paid for the destination. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, well, what are they going to do? Revoke our salary? They won't do that. I'll be silly. So what you're saying is we should go home and come back in like a week. But this is... Uh, we could chronicle this event if it happens every so often. Wouldn't be it be good to witness it? It's a legend. It, it's not every so often. 
a legend in the digital world, perhaps, but we don't have any record of it, do we? Zen, do we have any record of this? Eleanor just assumes Zen knows everything. <laughs> Those uh, kids and their technology. The I don't know if they're away or... Eleanor, Eleanor is like the grandma being like, so what's an email? Yeah, Zen's basically. Zen's checking their computer to see what they've got. Well, well, she seems a little preoccupied. Well, anyway, oh, I think we should stay and watch. Sorry, just stop. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's alright. Were you gonna say anything, Zen? Oh no, I was just gonna say I, I missed the last like two minutes. Uh, I was just having a my mom just came in to tell me something. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor was asking whether you you knew anything about this legend that Juju Mom was speaking of. Oh, okay. Zen would probably be like, uh, isn't that what those Digimon at the Sanctuary were talking about? Oh, yes, they were preparing for it. Weren't they, like, trying to train up that big Digimon to fight it or something? Digimon over here, that's like, that is an awful idea. Oh. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, no. Um. That's what was going on down there. Was that what was interesting? Hmm. Wait. Hold on. Then what's all this business about that strange glow we saw on a couple of those, that moose mon a while back? Um, uh, that is a good question. Do you happen to know anything about that? Oh, the armored? Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I can tell you about those. Oh, oh that'd be wonderful. Um, unfortunately, one of our parties eaten some of it. Pardon? Some of the, the metal. They ate it. One of one of Usually our... Um... Kind of just stands <laughs> up and starts looking around. He's asleep. It's the little guy there. Uh, walking over, uh, Jijimon looks down at Chibinumon. Uh, Zen, are your hands obvious? Um, is it on the back or just the palms? <laughs> uh... The right one is on the back, the left one is on the palm. I think right now Zen has is holding uh Chibi Inuman like from underneath, so it might not be obvious. Right. But she's probably not doing much to hide it if he's like looking. Oh, he just came over to like peer at Chibi and it's like, oh dear, that's not good. That's not good at all. Is he going to be okay? Uh let me tell you about these Digimon. It's more ancient legends. We always have more and more ancient legends. That's the way of the digital world. There was a great war once that spanned the digital world, and so many Digimon fought in it under different banners, and so many of them wore this armor that gave them strength and ferocity and drove them to fight. But when the war ended, those who were still armored couldn't stop fighting. And uh -oh. they spread to the more dangerous parts of the digital world and remained there, fighting there. And the Solid State Glacier is just one such place that's dangerous and wild. So many Digimon just, they give up thinking logically and they just hunt and act wildly to survive out here. And is there... the armored Digimon last among that. That's, that's... fine, but to be twisted by the armor like this, it's worrying. Oh dear. Is there any way to, to break free somehow? Um, who's specifically heading up the talks of talking to Gigimon about this? Um, Chioko started it, but if anybody else wants to take reins, they can. Yeah, I think Zen is probably at this point interested, but yeah. Well, I want to know who's putting themselves forward as the face party, being the oh, most yeah, no, oh, charismatic. A... Oh, yeah. Choker probably. Choker or Eleanor, I feel like. Is... They were the ones asking the questions. So. Yeah. Well, I'd like one of you to make a uh, persuade check, just for your general, how you've 
endeared yourself. Okay. Um, is my is my aspect still inactive then? Because I think it was Ah, uh, yeah, major aspect is once per narrative day. Okay. So you've already used it once. Okay. Um, so that would be... So who's going to roll? Shioko? Yeah, yeah, I can do it. Okay. That great. And Shijimon's looking you go over, over. It's like... Uh, I... I think there's a way to help, but I'd like to ask for your help as well, because with the ancients' actions, it's a dangerous time for the Solar State Glacier, and this village, there's no chance just here on the edge of the sea this village will remain, and I'd like to do something to change that. Oh, uh, of course. What can we do to help? Further south from here is the entrance to a network of tunnels, a mine system beneath the Solid State Glacier where metals for those armored Digimon were once extracted. Many Digimon still lurk within. It, we'd like, if it's possible, to create a safe location within those mines that the Digimon within these within this village can move down to. It would have to be far within the mines to be safe or the ancients overturning of the glacier will reach down that far but if you can create a safe place far enough down there all of the digimon of the snow Earth village could move there and last out the ancients reshaping of the area could you not go to the sanctuary you just said that you saw the ancient can topple mountains Going oh. higher up is not the right idea. And if the Sanctuary are making plans to fight it, that could be worse. Mm, yeah, that's true. I, I believe we'd be able to handle something like that. For the sake of that Digimon, it would be best to get it cared for sooner rather than later. But I'd like... <laughs> I hate to ask this of travelers, but in this desperate situation, I'd like some form of insurance if you were to head off to try and help this Digimon, that you would then come back and help the mines as well. Help us with the mines. Of course. Um, Shirko's trying to think, what can they... What can she give them? Hmm... If you need some time to discuss, uh, feel free. I can take a moment. And Jujumon just gets up and starts heading towards the entrance of the house to give you guys some free time to talk amongst yourself without anyone listening in. Chef is like, what can we offer as insurance? Uh, Zen pulled out her digivice. This ain't doing me much good right now. Hmm. I guess that could work. Good idea. So we're definitely not just leaving for a week, then? No. Of course not. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, I was like, I can find all sorts of things down. We have a piece of cake. We'll be fine as long as we stick together. So we're going right, to offer right. a broken Digivice. That might um, not be broken. Chiyoko's like, if I could offer mine as well, it still works, as far as I'm aware. I haven't dropped it or anything yet, I don't think. Isn't that what it's weird? worth at this point? When you guys came to the Snow Earth Village, you're resting now. Uh, Clive and Galgamon are going to TJ Evolve just because oh, at yeah. a point of rest, you can't maintain above your base level. That's fine. We're back to Galmon. Holy shit, I'm on the ground again. Can I just yeah. jump in for a sec? Um, yep. While this whole like discussion is going on, um, 
Stella's not entirely paying attention. She's just kind of like, you know, sitting over to the side in this nice, warm little like hut or whatever. Probably munching on one of those like fish snacks. And what I'm saying is, I would like to roll torment, please. <laughs> oh no. Uh, supporting character or there's no, no like time. the other one, yeah. All right, uh, your willpower is four, so 3d6 minus one. Oh Oof. no, oh. Oh. so the thing is, um, Stella gets homesick very quickly. Oh. <laughs> Oh no. She's sort of, yeah, she's sort of just kind of, I guess, huddled into the corner. Um, is Bergamon over here with her? Yeah, Bergamon uh, uh, perhaps can't help, but is probably attuned to her emotions in such a way that they won't leave her side now. Yeah, she's just like holding this boy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Pass. And she looks like very obviously like kind of upset. Cut back to the current conversation. So we're not going home. We're staying here instead. <laughs> we'll be fine, Derek. Don't worry. Oh. I like how so what's the party like decision? Derek actively says the wrong thing every time someone else is going to a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and this time it was before the tournament even started, so it wasn't even on purpose on my part. <laughs> Incredible. It's a gift. So yeah, I guess we can offer Zen's Digivice as collateral. Alright, so... You step outside to call back Digimon, and you can see he's just waiting outside. You can see there's some a lot of other Digimon around now. They're just kind of scattered around, keeping eyes on you, and there's all these different types of various-sized Digimon. Some are little, some are medium-sized. None of them are, like, person-sized or much bigger than Digimon, but there's just this scattering of Digimon all around the town, keeping an eye out for you. So here's an oh. example of some of them. So you've got some... Of these little guys who are just walking around and without legs actually come in and have got this um not full oh jump log but they're carrying it over their backs you got some little fluffy digimon that are kind of floating about oh. they're so cute and there's oh, a wait, that one's ominous group of three of no, these no, are just bobbing, bobbing about and this uh blue skinned reptile Digimon that's kind of like chasing them around trying to get them to stop floating above its head but there's a lot of activity out in the village now that you guys uh, cleared and Digimon oh. turns around as you guys are coming out it's like well what have you made a decision of Zen um, uh, tosses her Digivice at him <laughs> I Oh, um, we're offering this as collateral. All right. Toss the Digivice. Not sure if tossing an infected Digivice at this Digimon is a good idea, but hey. That's fine. It has a good dodge. Living on the edge. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. All right. Oh, no. That's okay. I've got agility and avoidance. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Oh. No. Uh, Gigimon sees this coming, like, panic swings his staff at it, swats it into the ground. The uh, thing just hits the ground, and he quickly drops the staff, and you see a circuit pattern starting to spread around the staff. Oh, no. Oh, it's like, oh my gosh. Uh, Choco's going to go scoop up the Digivice, kind of standing in front here still. So. Oh, my goodness. What? Oh, no. Like, uh, um, please don't expose that to digital beings. Okay, He's okay. Up, taking steps back now. Yeah, uh, Choco's gonna, like, scoop it up and just, like, hold it and be like, um, we will come up with a different idea. Just a moment. I'm so sorry. Going, you hear Jijuan go, you need to take that with you to fix it anyway. 
Um, would a would a functional one be all an all right? Um, mine mine works. Jijuan's like kind of keeping a bit of a distance, but slowly holds out a hand to Chioko specifically, like gesturing for Chioko. Oh, well, not Chioko because Chioko's holding the di- the um badge. Uh, can Eleanor give him like snacks from her bag as collateral? Uh, Chioko, Chioko's gonna set. Uh, is gonna take hers put it on the ground and kind of like kick it gently towards him. All right. Jijuan kind of just hovers near. It's like, okay, okay. Um, if you head to the west, you'll see a path that leads up into a snowy forest. Within the forest, there is a spring of clear water. And when Arma and Digimon drink from that, they're able to think clearly for a time. You should be able to use that to help i don't know how much but it's the best that we do have in the glacier that i know of all right thank you so much we'll be we'll be back I promise so is his stick just sitting in the snow corrupting now yep uh choco will take that also just because we should get that out of here okay um, Choco. if we can fix it we'll bring your staff back good as new too just maybe find a new branch in the forest on your way back. All right. Can Eleanor um, give him her spare cane? <laughs> Eleanor puts down the cane and Jijuan just kind of watches for you guys to start moving away. But you see as you get distance, he walks over and picks up and he starts using the cane. Oh, good. All right. Tradesies. So you guys are heading out west now? Yep. Guess so. <laughs> All right. Xanolos fucking murders the <laughs> Yeah. Whoops. You almost <laughs> made this old man extremely evil. The path up from <laughs> some of the village long. is an upwards climb that reaches up pretty high. Uh, Choco, do you give Zen's device back or are you holding onto it? Um, she's probably on to it. She's got this arm garbage. Right. Joko's carrying things. Uh, you guys are heading up the path. You know that you've been told the forest is ahead here. Is there anything you want to talk about at this scenario? She's probably like strapped the digivice to the center of the cane, like that paw part at the top of the cane. All right. So uh, just so you know, without your Digivice, Clive cannot Digivolve. Yeah, you figured. This is a sacrifice we will have to make for the team. Man, that really would have been easier for keeping the curse one off. Yeah. Sadly. All right. Uh, talk me through what's on your moods right now, guys. What's? How's the party doing? Clive is so nervous with not having that digivice and not being able to digivolve. He's just like in his head, just silently screaming. Yeah, Choco's a little nervous, but that's why she's on to the corrupted staff at the corrupted digivice because she's gonna like swing it if anything tries to attack her. Mm-hmm. Don't know if that would help. She's hoping it, she won't actually have to hit anybody with it, but more of a keep back, I have evil in my hands kind of thing. She doesn't actually want to hit anybody with it because it is evil. So Clive actually has to walk through the snow now? Um, yeah, I mean, unless he wants to, like, piggyback. He's on high alert, so he's okay walking. We don't want rage Clive on accident. Oh, jeez. Win Clive angry text. <laughs> Clive not a All right, how are the rest of you doing? Eleanor, Derek, Stella, Zen? Eleanor is doing fine. Um, she she really wants to help these guys out, so she's sort of leading the charge, I think. Uh, Zen is very unhappy with not having not having the ability to like scan everything constantly. Mm-hmm. It's 
I think she's a little touchy right now and is probably uh like you guys would probably notice um throughout the course of this like how long have we been it's only been like two days right uh, in, in, in in the uh i mean i think we camped in, once more right? of a day and a half okay i think maybe uh zen has this like routine that you guys have gotten used to where when you guys first when everybody first comes into the digital world she's very like standoffish and then slowly starts talking more and interacting more and then when you go back to the real world it starts all over again and you, you get, like she's already retreating back into herself at this point oh like not having something to focus on uh is kind of messing with her So, the Digivice is corrupting whatever it touches, right? Doesn't doesn't your dog still have those lines on it? Uh, Zen looks down. There's still a circuit pattern over the sleeping Chibino one. Uh, so. Zen nods and then also holds out her hand so that you guys can see it. Oh, goodness. Do you corrupt things, too? Can it uh, corrupt humans? Says Chumbo, holding two very corrupted objects in her tiny head. <laughs> uh, Zen starts walking towards Derek with her hand out. Oh, nope. God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's <laughs> find out, shall we? You'll never catch me. I have explicitly a runaway aspect. <laughs> Speaking of which... I'm running away. <laughs> Bye, Derek. What's that movement again? Oh yeah. If I can, can I add my major aspect to the movement? Uh, you haven't used your major aspect today. So I run sure. away fifteen squares. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> go on. Books it. Bye. That's probably not fifteen, yeah. but. My head Gavin's like, head. um... We racing? <laughs> yeah, let's go! Woo! Am I faster than Galmon? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Galmon's movement is sick. Yeah, it's like less than half. <laughs> Alright, Derek and Galmon have booked it. Eleanor is steadily heading forward, or... Yeah. All right, uh, Stellar and Zen, are you just moving? I'm going to assume we yeah. booked it in the correct direction rather than into a wall, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, there's a path you're actually able to follow. Okay. Choco is the plague carrier now. Like yeah, Choco, doctor, make an okay? insurance check. Make an insurance check. Huh, I have no idea why I rolled those D4s. Was that a button I hit? Oh, there's a button that just uh, does that. Neat. Insurance. What is this? Like, uh, Chiyoko Baggins with the fucking one digivice to rule them all? Hey guys, I don't have insurance. Oh, wow. So does that make Zen or Chiba Inumon Gollum? Cause... Oh, it's Chiba Inumon for sure. Because they're both definitely super corrupted. How could you say no to that face? <laughs> All right. Uh, Shoko, originally when Digimon batted down the um, Digivice and dropped its staff, you went and picked up the Digivice. Which hand did you pick it up with? Oh, no. Um, I believe she's right-handed. All right. So as you guys are following the path, ahead of you, you can see uh, trees in the distance where the forest that Digimon directed to you is. There's a cool wind that's blowing through the air, and most of you shudder on the cold. But as you're shivering, Shioko, you notice that your right hand is actually very hot. Hmm. And you look down and you can see uh, the snow glove you're wearing also just starting to decay and decompose. And beneath it, a bright gold pattern imposed on your skin. Oh, Clive is not happy. 
And we'll come back to that in the next session. <laughs> Clive goes, Clive goes, um, hold on, I'm trying to think of a good, like, closing line. Uh, Clive goes, what the fuck? <laughs> there you what? go. Clive is grounded now. When bad bottom text. <laughs> when bad bottom text. <laughs> when Clive. Um, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Stop next time. I will stop the recording um, now. Okay. Um, I have a question. Does the does the, the pattern look like anything?